everyone. Would you please welcome to the Putting You Over podcast, your CPBW Women's Champion, the Bubblegum Princess, Alexia Nicole. So that that popped like a bubble, like a bubble gum. <laughs> I'm good. Excellent. Everything you can hear me fine? Yeah, yeah, I can hear. Awesome. Spectacular. Welcome. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm not bad. Uh, I'm not bad at all, actually, except I'm extremely hot down here. Uh, I was cold earlier. The air conditioning pumps down here more than it does upstairs. So, um, But anyways, what would you be doing tonight if you were not on this show? Honestly, not much. I'd probably be playing like video games or watching YouTube and just like sitting in bed. <laughs> just <laughs> falling down that rabbit hole. I fell down that rabbit yeah. hole last night <laughs> in YouTube. I relived the summer of punk. Um, video games, what would you be playing? Um, honestly, it depends on what kind of mood I'm in. If I was like super awake, <laughs> like had a lot of energy to burn, I'd play something like really dense, like The Witcher, just like, okay. a, like a very heavy game with a lot of story. If not, and I was just tired and like trying to pass the time like animal crossing something light and fluffy yeah um my kids want to play animal crossing but we haven't gotten a switch yet we're late yeah. we're late to the game um trying to turn self turn this video the witcher uh not my type of game i all a lot of my friends it's their type of game uh i saw some pictures you did a cosplay of it i believe yeah, I honestly, it's not my type of game either. I usually don't like them. I just like the story a lot, so it helped me get into the game. Yeah, I heard, I mean, I heard the story's great. I heard they are maybe making a Netflix show, I think. I don't. So the, know that. There's a Netflix show, and they're doing, like, an animated Netflix movie. She knows more than me, Vanessa. <laughs> it doesn't take much. It does not. You're right. Somebody in the chat, their name is Poker ACZ. Uh, been talking to us the whole show. Says fun fact: Me and Alexia are best friends on Pokemon Go. We are. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Phenomenal. Uh, I did play that game for a short minute uh, at with my students uh, for a while. We would play it during uh, recess, uh, mm -hmm. but then I got out of it. Then I played the Walking Dead version when that came uh. out instead. Well, I, I don't know anything about Pokemon, so all I would do is just catch things. I didn't know uh, what I was catching. Well, if it was good or not, I just caught them. Yeah, I know too much about Pokemon, so I was very, very picky about what I do. Uh, Spencer Love, when I told him we had you on the show, you were stopping by tonight, I asked him for any tidbits, anything, and he goes, uh, she's huge in a Pokemon. It's like, well, I know nothing. I probably <laughs> will not go down that avenue, but that is okay. Because uh, I have other avenues, and we do have a little bit of wrestling. We'll talk a little wrestling. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, what, what? I don't want to say, how do I want to start this? I want to try to say it a little differently. What's the origin story uh, of your love for wrestling? Um, I honestly, I would just watch it on TV. Like, my brother was a huge fan. Um, and I would just sit in the background and watch it with him. And then eventually, as he grew out of it, I got more and more into it. Uh, older brother, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I heard in, uh, and I'm going to give credit this time because I remember the podcast, in Ella J's A Wrestling Gals podcast, uh, your, what really drew you into wrestling, and correct me if I'm wrong, is um, because the, the women's wrestling at that time was not what it is now and that drew you in because you wanted to be better so to speak yeah 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 for lack of terms like i just felt like that's that's not it like that's not all women can do like they can yeah. do so much more it's not just like a five minute six woman like bikini tag match so i just felt like i could do more than that and i wanted that's really what drew me in to start wrestling um i love it i love that response because uh I'm a big proponent of women's wrestling. I have three daughters mm -hmm. and uh, I show them wrestling, women's wrestling today. Like what, what we see today, stuff like the stuff that you do in the ring, uh, you know, all, all top of the line wrestling, women's wrestling. Uh, don't really show them much of the attitude era. 
<laughs> uh, I would just not be parenting 316 if I did that. That's for sure. Um, yeah. So you got started at a young age, 15. Mm -hmm. Not what I'm doing at 15 years old is, is <laughs> training to be a wrestler. Uh, was watching it, was not training. Your parents, when you go up to your parents at 15, what's that like? Tell me that story. Because my daughter's um, going to be 15 soon, <laughs> and I won't be ready. They weren't into it. They, I don't think they were excited about it at all. Um, but I got lucky, and Taylor Wilde was actually having like an all-girls uh, wrestling right. class at for a few months. Yeah, squared circle. Yeah, it's squared. So I got really lucky, and I was like, hey, I can do this. It's like a nice little trial period. It's once a week. It's all girls. Like, it's nice and safe, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's not me being thrown around by a bunch of guys getting hurt. Um, and I was just, I started doing that. My mom would take me and she would watch every week. And she saw that I was getting good at it. So it helped stay, helped me stay in wrestling. But at first they were definitely not into it. That's for sure. It would make me feel more comfortable, uh, whether I was into it or not. If, if my daughter came up to me and said she wanted to, to, Know, train to be a wrestler uh and i found out it was an all women's class at least to start off uh, mm -hmm. that would make me feel better what it, what resonates most with you about it being an all women's class besides you know your parents feel comfortable you feel a little more comfortable what'd you take away from it um it was just it was a good intro for sure like yeah. it was a good way to learn the basics without feeling intimidated um, because this, once I started training with everyone, it was just this, you know, this tiny 15 year old me with a bunch of giant guys. Um, so it's scary. It's yeah. harder to learn. You feel you're nervous and like you, you're scared to try things. It's really that small group of women just felt really, really like accessible to get in, to learn how to do things and to just like be a part of it without that fear of like, oh my God, I'm going to get like hurt by accident or something like that. Um, and then you are, uh, almost five feet of fury, I believe yeah, almost. <laughs> almost five feet of fury, I'm close, um, close. <laughs> so, uh, definitely would feel overwhelming. Uh, I would think, um, did you pick up, did it come easy? Did the first bump come easy Did training come easy? Yeah. I, uh, I was doing karate for years at ah. that point. So like the bumps came easy, the grappling came easy, the footwork came easy, um it was more like the in-between that i had like the actual moves themselves that i had to like sort of learn because i hadn't, hadn't really done them before and like strikes i would strike for real so i'm like okay how do i not punch someone in the face how do i not bust <laughs> someone open yeah <laughs> uh um so we talked about when you fell in love with wrestling you watched it with your brother uh in the talent back then who who's some of your inspirations and why that's what i really want to know and why, and why um, inspirations? Yes. I mean, she's from that era, I guess. But like Trish is a huge inspiration. Just oh like you trained with her, right? I did. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, she's a huge inspiration. Molly Holly is huge. Victoria, Mickey James. Um, in terms of guys, like the Undertaker was always. Like, I was just, like a big fan of him, and it was just everything about him. Like he just had this presence mm -hmm. that no matter what, no everyone stopped to look which i think and he wasn't like over the top loud like a hulk hogan yeah where he just kind of yelling all the time it was just like a quiet guy just comes out with complete silence like he doesn't he doesn't how can i explain it he doesn't like again like hulk hogan he's the exact opposite but hogan he, chases the hog and the undertaker yeah. Does not. yeah yeah i thought that was so cool um and then there's guys like ray mysterio who are you know, tiny and not the biggest guy, but they still, you know, these great wrestlers and they know how to use their size with their advantage. And that's what I found really cool about him. Um, does have that presence. Did you catch any of the American, the American badass? Very little. Very I was still kind of young. Yeah. I didn't catch a ton of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, before we get into, uh, some more of your accolades, uh, number 55 and the PWI 100, uh, poker, your best friend on Pokemon Go has a question, um, and I'm going to ask it now because we don't have any structure and I don't have notes on your injury in here. So I do know that uh, you had surgery, I believe, mm -hmm. on your shoulder, yeah. and uh, he is wondering how the rehab is the shoulder rehab ahead of schedule, and if so, do you plan on getting in the ring ASAP? Um, it's kind of ahead of schedule. My 
it's doing well. Like in terms of like, I have literally a week by week program of what I'm supposed to be doing and where I'm supposed to be at. And I'm ahead in that sense, but um, I'm more hesitant to push it only because I've had, like I've tried to push through shoulder injuries before and that's what led me to getting a surgery. So I don't want to rush back. If I, my doctor says I'm good to go, like my surgeon says I'm good to go, my physiotherapist says I'm good to go, 100% I'm going to get back to the ring as soon as I can. Um, but until I get those like check marks of approval, I'm, I'm. It makes me sad, but I'm not stepping in until I know it's safe. You don't want another. You don't want another setback. No. Yeah. Um. So there you go, Poker. Got got that in. Um, <laughs> Sometimes we never bring up injuries because injuries suck mm-hmm. and no one likes injuries and no one likes surgeries. So yeah, they're um, a part of wrestling. Like everyone gets yeah. hurt. Everyone's working hurt yeah. at some point. So it's just, it's a part of wrestling. Um, as I said, PWI number 55, phenomenal. Crack that. Uh, you are the reigning, the first, let me see if I get this right, Vanessa. The first wait, the reigning, the first and the only Crossbody Pro Wrestling Women's Champion at this moment yes. in time. Yeah. Um, and I believe you are also still the current Femme Fatale Champion? Yes. Um, are there any I'm missing? Um, I'm also the current Backyard Pro Champion. Oh, well, well. <laughs> now, hold on. Because last time I checked, uh, that's Detective Cookie Dough. Okay, fine, fair. Detective Cookie Dough is. Um, I did bring Detective Cookie Dough to life, though. So. You did. You did bring her to life. Um, Backyard Pro, me and Vanessa are huge fans of that. Um, to the point where I wanted to watch some of it on here. And, and uh, Von Vertigo said we could, but it's got so much music that it would just flag us here on Twitch. Um, but that leads me. So now I got to go off course. So now you got me <laughs> off course with Detective Cookie Dough. So, guys, go to Backyard Pro. Vanessa, you're going to have to. Wait, let me check the link. Uh, yeah, of course I didn't put the link in there. Uh, got your Twitter, okay. your Instagram, your Pro Wrestling Tees, but I didn't put Backyard Pro. So Detective Cookie Dough, but you were a private eye in real life. Yes. So let me let me see if I get this straight. So your what? What does that even consist of? A lot of sitting in my car doing nothing. That was a majority of the job. Um, not like a dog, the bounty hunter. No, I worked on insurance claims. Mine oh. was very low scale. No, <laughs> no empty, no catfishing. You don't break someone down, catch them in a. I, I wish, but no. No. Uh, did you enjoy being a private eye? You know what I did. Um, near the end, like I, I, it got very boring to yeah. me, and I don't like to be bored. Right. Um. But like that for me, that was like a serious buzzkill, especially because it was just like eight hours straight of just sitting, staring at a house, watching nothing. That does um, not sound like fun to me. No, and it, it just the days would drag on, and like it, the hours were all over the place. That it, it was fun for a bit, and it was something I was happy to do. It was something I wanted to do, but I'm. It was definitely like I, if you're, I recommend it for someone who's probably a bit older. <laughs> <laughs> If that makes sense. Like yeah, it's, no. It's a very dull job. I will. It's a very dull job. Sit at Stewart. You, know, you guys don't know what Stewart's is. Yeah, but you know, just sit at your local uh, coffee shop and just watch a house for hours. Yeah, yeah. an older an older uh, person definitely kind of works. So that so, but the private eye aspect of things that you do. Uh, so Detective Cookie Dough in Backyard Pro. This um, we stumbled upon Backyard Pro with. Where did we first learn about it, Vanessa? Was it with Holden? Probably Holden. I think Holden told us about or it. Mark. Maybe Mark or Wheeler. Wheeler. And we're gonna get to him because I got I. You now own his contract, I believe. I do. Yes, in Barry Wrestling, I am his contract holder. Um. So yeah, so let me, we'll get that. Let me finish up back here, bro. <laughs> so that was a. Let me. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Was that a savior for the pandemic? Kind of, in a way, like it was definitely a good way to stay like into wrestling. It was very hard to stay into wrestling for me once the pandemic hit because everything shut down. Right. Um, and then like I wasn't super into pandemic era like TV wrestling. It was really hard for me to stay focused. I gotta be honest. Like watching um, it or performing yeah. it or watching it? Okay. 
watching it yeah like performing wasn't so bad i've done like a few sort of like those closed set tapings those are okay they feel a little awkward without fans but it's what like it's just like a training match you would have so it's not the worst right. um it felt awkward to watch though um but yeah backyard pro which um i can't remember which one of them said this but uh, everybody does backyard wrestling i mean most of the guests we've ever had on this show always started in their trampoline um you know wrestling in the backyard but vaughn was saying i think it was vaughn uh you know he wanted to bring the production to it and just the craziness and uh so yeah it's if nobody's seen backyard it's youtube.com slash backyard pro um season there's three seasons i believe yeah. um and it's good stuff and detective cookie dough is which title you own over there I am the Backyard Pro champion. I think I'm yeah, world champion. I don't know. There's a, there's a lot of belts. I got to be honest. <laughs> That's what happens in a backyard wrestling promotion. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm the Backyard Pro champion. Um, who did you beat for that champion? Because I think I missed it. Jay Wheeler. Ah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, of course you did. Um, but uh, so... So let's talk about these contracts. Uh, yeah, Mark Wheeler's, and I believe Clutch Jesse, I think? Yes, Jesse V. Jesse V. I left the V out because I thought it meant the fifth. Like, I'm Jesse <laughs> the fifth. So no. Clutch Jesse V and Mark <laughs> Wheeler. Uh, what do you have planned for them? I've got big things planned. Mark right now is the champ, so I want to keep him there. I want him to Boy, stay on top. Boy, you just collect all sorts of belts look at them we're now. getting all the belts yeah there's there they are a tag team so we can get the tag belts there's okay. a three pistols belt which i'm sure jesse v would have no problem uh being that champion so i've i've got ideas i definitely want them to run the place um and as they should like they're both great wrestlers it look great you know can talk they, i'm just there to make sure they succeed keeping them on task yes behind all great men are a better wo woman that's right. Damn straight, right, Vanessa? You know it. You know it. Um, for people, I know Poker knows this, but for people that do not, um, you are the bubblegum princess. What's that origin? How does that start? Um, I used to chew gum when I got nervous. So that would stop me from grinding my Interesting. teeth. Interesting. And one day I had all I had was bubble gum, so I started chewing it and I had to cut a promo and I just used it. And that's literally the origin. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Somebody said that's that'll it. work. That's how it started. Yeah. Th <laughs> That's interesting, though, that you chew it when you're nervous because you grind your teeth. We were just talking yeah. about um, it was a pet. It's a pet peeve of mine. N nothing against you. Um, yeah. We were talking about MJF. He chews gum when he's cutting his promos because I see it. Dave Grohl, the Foo Fighters, has it when he sings. Mm -hmm. uh, and I forgot what he said, what, why he said he chews it. Um, can't remember now. But that is interesting. So you chew it because you grind your teeth. You're nervous you probably so you probably have it in when you're doing promos right sometimes i'll try to like squish it to the side of my mouth so that i can actually talk <laughs> <laughs> yeah um same thing when i wrestle like i'll either like put it in like a tissue or something or like like stuff it in an e-pad just so i can don't worry about choking on it but uh yeah like it's, it's usually i usually have at least like a piece before the show like a full piece of gum and then at literally the second the show starts i pop another one in just to like relax uh, I don't chew gum. I don't like it anymore um, because the last time I chewed it, it knocked a filling out of my tooth. And uh, that led to a root canal, which I was not very fond of. I mean, that's a reason to stop chewing. Yes, I just don't, <laughs> don't, I have no desire anymore to do that. Poker yeah. says he chews gum as a habit. Like he'd rather be chewing gum than smoking or, or tobacco chew. It's great. That's yeah. why they put, you know, and they make gum when people are trying to quit smoking. Mm -hmm. um, as I prepared for you, uh, I realized that I have seen you wrestle before. You wrestled Jordan Grace in Impact. Ah, yes. Um, and so you, you made an appearance there. I think you also had some time in Ring of Honor, but I don't think you were in the ring there. Um, I don't think. But, um, I wrestled once for Ring of Honor, one and then I managed a couple times, I think. Who'd you manage? Uh, the fraternity. Um, what's your biggest takeaway from those 
appearances, especially getting in the ring with with someone like Jordan Grace's, you know, caliber. Um, it, good learning experiences, like good to learn because, like, especially in Canada, not a lot of shows are like like recorded and like put on like a platform like IWTV or streamed. Like, it's a lot of smaller independent shows, so it's a good way to get used to being in front of a camera and like knowing your cues and stuff like that. Um, also bigger crowds, like how to work with bigger crowds and that kind of thing. And like, again, like the nerves, like it's so much more nerve wracking to work with in a bigger crowd for a bigger company where there's cameras everywhere. Um, but you just, it helps you get used to that feeling. And like the more I, especially with impact, the more I, every time I had a match with impact, I definitely felt more comfortable each time. How many matches did you, have you had under the impact banner? Um, I want to say two, four, I think four. Five or six. Yeah. Who else? Who else have you been in the ring with at Impact? I mean, because I want to go back and watch them. Can I watch <laughs> them all somewhere? I think so. Um, I wrestled Madison Rain twice. Oh. Um, we did a. She just returned. Tag match. Yeah. Uh, we did a tag match. It was me, Jordan, and Rosemary against Taya, Madison, and Kira. I believe is that it's been a couple of years now, so I'm trying to remember if that's right. Um, and then the um, Impact Throwback Show. It was the Rough Riders against. Uh, oh, that's what where I also saw yeah. you as the Rough Riders <laughs> with yeah. Tessa and her crew. Oh man, I tell you what, Impact's women's division is got to be talked about in the top of one. I think they have the best women. Yeah, like overall. Yeah, uh, we've we've mentioned this before. I know Kiera Hogan just she just had to leave. You know, not had to leave. She mm-hmm. just left. She showed up on uh, AW Dark last night, I believe. Yeah. Um, but still, I mean, people come in and out. Madison Rain returned. Taylor Wilde returned not too long ago. Mm-hmm. Um, what's it like to see the person who trained you then in the ring working? Makes me happy. Yeah. <laughs> Makes me happy. Like she had. When she had started training me, I think she had like maybe just retired or had been like a year, hadn't been long. Um, and she was just like, she hasn't lost a beat. And it makes me so happy to see that after all this time, she's still got it. Yeah. Not only does she still got it, but like, she's still great at it. Um, like she doesn't move, like she moves like she's been, hasn't stopped over the past 10 years. And like, she's had a kid, like she's been living a life outside of wrestling. It's, so it's weird. not easy. It's weird. Cause I remember <laughs> when she debuted the first time around. Mm-hmm. And uh, you're right. She has not missed a beat. Not at all. Yeah. Um, you finish uh, a match at Impact. Uh, the match is over. You come through the curtains at Impact. Uh, who's the first person that comes up to you? Um, who's the first person? I don't know what the first person that comes up to me is, but the first person I go to okay. is Josh Alexander. Ah. Uh, and, w- and what do you go to him for? Feedback. Critique? Feedback? Yeah. Do, yeah. you, do you want him to uh, pat you on the back, say good job, or do you want to get down to the nitty-gritty of uh, how you can get better? Because everybody can get better every in everything. Yeah. I want him to tear apart everything I did and tell me how I can fix it. That's the way to do it right there. Yeah. That's the only, that's the only, that's way, the to only way to learn. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, a lot of guys will be super nice to girls in wrestling, and they'll be like, oh, yeah, it was great, and they'll just, like, shrug it off. I'm like, no, like, tell me what sucked. I need to know. He doesn't – is he that type of guy? Will he tell you uh, – like, will he say, Alexa, uh, Alexia, this was, uh, this, this was shit? Does he – is he yeah. that type of guy? He is that type of guy. He'll be straight up, yeah, and I, I, I appreciate it. Like, I'm so happy he is. That's why he's, he is the person I go to because I know he'll be super honest about it. Yeah. Awesome, man. Seems like a great guy. I just seems so nice, though. <laughs> but maybe he's not. As I just said your name, my uh, Alexa just turned on over there. That happens a lot. Because <laughs> <It does. laughs> uh, I screwed it up. At first, I started to say Alexa, obviously, because it's all mm-hmm. over the place. Um, so that's interesting. Yeah, Josh Alexander. Um, so So... You're, you're healing, your shoulder's getting better. You know, you're, 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 I wouldn't say playing it safe and cautious. I would just say playing mm-hmm. it smart, I guess. Yeah. Um, I heard Samoa Joe today 
on a podcast and he talked about an injury he was working back from and he said almost the words you had said he he said he, he wants he took it slow this time he didn't want to rush it like he did in previous injuries um because that just set him back so you know for what it's worth i think you're making the right choice um but when you do get back in the ring uh and you do start kicking ass um What's the first step? Where where do you where are you going? Uh, I guess what's the goals? Uh, the goals the goals are to wrestle like out of the country. I know it's kind of hard right now. Yeah. Um, with the way everything is, especially because like wrestling just came back to Canada, yep. so that's even harder. Um, but the goal is to expand. Like I feel like there's only so many girls in Canada, and it it sucks. But there's just so few women's wrestlers that you kind of you wrestle everyone pretty quickly like if there's only a few girls i haven't worked with and i've been doing this a long time um whereas compared to the states there's just like a whole list of women from everywhere and like the uk and japan and mexico like there's just so many other people to work with like that's my biggest goal is i want to work with people from everywhere i want to learn different things and the only way to do that is to work with people from all over yeah um and i mean pandemic aside uh what i have learned since bringing vanessa on board to help me uh you know showcase canadian talent i have learned it's it's quite difficult just to cross the border in general to to work yeah uh, which is a shame, <laughs> very difficult which is an absolute shame uh and i i heard you mention something about it on one of the other podcasts and you were saying like it's almost like taking a risk like you may get let across you may not um so there's always that yeah like i've been i've been lucky and unlucky like i've been turned around which is unlucky but at the same time i've never been banned um because you get banned you're out of the states for five years that's five years of your career that you cannot wrestle for any like major wrestling company that's five years that you just can't even like go for a trial or a seminar like that's a big chunk of time. Um, so I'm lucky that that's never happened. But yeah, like it's if one all it takes is one guard to not understand that I'm going basically for experience and not to get paid right. to just turn you around and send you home. Okay, so all right, let me see if I get this straight because I have to do this every time. So you come up to the border in the guard. Mm-hmm. You you say I'm going to I'm I'm going to you know work this. Uh, ring of honor women's tournament or whatever the case may be whatever 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 show you want to input there um if you're so you said you're going there for the experience and not getting paid they won't let you if you're getting paid yeah and you're technically without a visa we can't get paid in situations like where it's like a Even, tournament okay with, yeah. with ring of honor like a big usually with major companies they give you some form of letter okay, um most so- do it too or they give you like a letter basically saying like this person is coming for this saying like blah 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 blah. like that's the main gist of it and like for usually for things like wwe like live events and raws and smackdown and stuff like that you just say like i'm going as an extra because that's what i'm there i'm there as an extra i'm not i don't work for them and this is literally like part of a tryout so that's no problem it is really just one guard say, seeing the word professional wrestler and just being professional and thinking like uh, you do this for a living you don't have a work visa you're not going so yeah. like if i'm holding a show let's say i'm putting on uh the, the putting you over rumble and i want you to come in um like i can all like i can say hey come in for for 200 bucks or whatever if you say that, if you say, I, I don't know, I guess you're right. I guess it's, yeah, I can't get paid basically. So you but, can't like, get paid, but you can't say you're getting paid or you can't say I'm getting paid. But like at the end of the day, most of the time when you, like when we wrestle, most Canadians wrestle in the States, they're not really coming home with anything. Yeah. By the time you like, you take care of travel, um, even if that's covered by the time you take care of travel and food and gas and like all of that. Most of their money has already been spent in the States. Most, if not all, has been already spent in the States. So I'm not coming back with anything. I, I don't think I've sometimes rarely come back. to be an American. <laughs> <laughs> I have another question. So, okay, so you're driving up to the border. You're going mm-hmm. to a show, okay? You're, you're performing. 
or you're wrestling. Sorry. You're, you're going to a show and you pull up, you, you tell the guy you're going for experience. You're not getting paid. You're an extra, whatever. Yeah. But you, you bring along with you like boxes of your eight by tens and boxes of your shirts because you want to put them up and try to sell them there. What do they do then? Most Canadians never bring merch with them. They never bring merch. If we do have merch, we'll have it on the other side of the border. We, that's how you get in trouble. Um, And it sucks because again, like that is your main, like for me, and merch is like a big chunk of my income wrestling. Um, But when I go to the States, I can't sell it. I have to just tell people buy online. Man, that sucks. (laughs) Yeah. Americans are very lucky and they get to come here too for, and it's, no issues yeah you're very lucky people (laughs) my eyes have been opened like tremendously and i'm sorry that that has to happen and it's horse crap i guess i don't know i'm i would did not think i was going to be talking border patrol tonight (laughs) um poker says he already has a calendar and an eight by ten good job out of you um so enough wrestling i'm done talking wrestling for the night (laughs) Uh, I'm sick of it, to tell you the truth. There's too much of it on. No offense. Um, I want to talk Disney princesses right now. Yeah. You're a big Disney fan. Uh, yeah. you have, I saw your jacket. You have all the mm-hmm. princesses on the back. Uh, who's your favorite? Mulan. Can't get my kids to watch the... Okay. Uh, animated or live action? Animated. Can't get... They've seen the animated, so they do mm-hmm. they do enjoy it. But they, do you prefer any live action over animated Disney wise? Um, I don't think so. To be honest, I think the animated ones are better. I might just be not thinking of one, but for the majority, I like, I enjoy the animated movies more. I agree. I think there's Mulan, obviously, Lion mm-hmm. King. Yeah. Uh, which I have not seen live action. I can't call if there's um Disney Plus Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the better. Beast, that's right. Right. Good call, Vanessa. Um but we don't watch a lot of those, so kids must enjoy the animated. But Disney Plus is huge in this house. Um mm-hmm. so I told I told my girls I was interviewing the bubble gum print I told them I was interviewing a princess tonight. Um so um they asked for some recommendations on Disney Plus of stuff to watch. What are they into? Well, this is exciting. <laughs> uh, I have, so their ages are 12. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then one's going to be nine in September and one's going to be five in October. So we kind of run the gamut. Okay. Um, so it's kind of an open floor. Okay. Um, I recommend, uh, in terms of like classic animated movies, I recommend Lilo and Stitch. Okay, they have not uh, seen that. Very good. The I oldest one Lilo might have, but the other two have not. Um, I recommend Wall-E. Okay. I recommend Ratatouille. Okay, they have um, seen If you want to get into Star Wars, The Mandalorian is fantastic. Oh, yes, I've made them watch <laughs> all of them. Yes. <laughs> they have seen all of those okay good <laughs> um, and the oldest uh, actually yeah. just finished uh sorry to interrupt no, that's the okay. oldest just finished wandavision and loki nice uh, so i was I, gonna say wandavision yeah. uh falcon the winter soldier the what if series i know only the first episode is out but that was so good yeah it was <laughs> when the, uh, i forgot it was coming out um mm-hmm. and i have watched the first episode but when what days are they coming out I, that I don't know. I have to check because okay. I just, I, I had forgotten what day it was coming out too. And I yeah. saw it on just like this past weekend. I was like, oh, cool. I can start watching it. Right. So it might actually be coming up like this week, probably. I think, yeah, I think it's, I think it's either on like a Tuesday. I think it's a, on a night after I do this show. It's mm-hmm. either on a Tuesday night or a... Okay. Wally, I like that. They haven't seen yeah. that. They can get into that. I hear, I heard you mention, um, and the Hannah Montana series. Should I get that? Hannah Montana, that? yes. That is also a recommendation. Um, Recess. Um, okay, Recess, I don't Lizzie know. Lizzie McGuire. Um, that's a Raven. Now I'm just going to start naming off things. Yeah. I, yeah, I think we should. Because right now they're in, they're, they're in the YouTube rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. When I left, they were watching. 
Um, so yeah, thank you. So, oh, excellent. Phenomenal, phenomenal picks. Um, I also heard you mention to Ella J on a wrestling gal. Yes, I got all that correct. Um, or maybe it was on someone else's podcast, but I'll just say it. Um, you talked about getting serious email inquir- inquiries, serious email inquiries. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so my question for you is what are some of the weirdest ones that you've gotten? Oh, man, people, they just ask for weird, like, I'm not going to sell my socks. I'm not going to sell my underwear. I'm not going to sell like, I'll sell gear, but like, that's not included. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I, I, um, oh. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you my home address. I'm not like. Just a lot of those kind of questions. Um, I had one guy like asked me to do his podcast. I'm like, yeah, cool, sure. And then he's like, okay, cool. It's in my house. I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm not, not doing that. Not going to your house, sir. I don't even know who you are. Like you'll, um, you'll give an interview after a show, like at the place. Yeah, yeah, no problem. But I'm not coming um, to your basement. To do I'm not going, yeah, I'm not going to your house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like stuff, like just like really like over... Like crossing the line that is just too personal. Creepy. Yeah. A, a lot of asking for like, oh, hey, do you have any ring worn, you know, insert here? Mm. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's why I always put please serious inquiries only whenever I'm selling something or it's getting bookings because like, again, like I'm not going to come wrestle in your backyard. Right. Um, especially if it's just me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Anyways. Um, well, the thing I'm going to uh, end with before I give you the microphone so you can put over anything you want, uh, I'm going to bring us back to Bubblegum since you are the Bubblegum princess. Mm-hmm. Um, and let me see if I can find the best way to phrase this. Um, have you ever h- heard of the phrase uh, uh, F. Mary Kill? Yes. You know. Okay. This is has to do with Bubblegum. You have to chew one, you have to share one, or you have to trash one. So chew, okay. chew share, trash Bubblegum edition. Hubba Bubba, Big League Chew, or Bubblicious? Um, I'll, I'm going to trash Big League Chew okay. right off the bat. I'm not a fan. I don't like the little sticks. Um, I will let's share one and chew one. Yep. I'm going to share the Bubblicious because I like it, but like I, I know other people. It's, it's basic enough that other people can have it. Hubba Bubba has, like, I feel like, more flavors and more intense flavors, so I'm going to keep that for myself. I will chew that. All right, so for those keeping score at home, it's Chew Hubba Bubba, Share Bubblicious, and Trash Big League Chew. Phenomenal. Alexia, uh, you've been great. I'm going to give you the floor now. I'm going to give you the forum. Oh, thank you. You can put over anything you want. We've gotten... Mm-hmm. Your links in the chat. We got some backyard pro links in the chat as well. But um, you know, for the people listening, because we'll push it out there or, or on YouTube. Uh, you know, floor's yours. I ain't gonna interrupt. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Alexia at it's Alexia Nicole. Um, Instagram at Alexia Nicole. Um, I have a pro wrestling tees shop, which is www.prowrestlingtees/bubblegum. You can check out my. Big Cartel store, which is alexinicolewrestler.bigcartel.com. Making sure I get all my links right because I always forget them. <laughs> and yeah, and yeah, check out Backyard Pro on YouTube. Um, it's honestly some of the most fun I've ever had in wrestling. Super creative, and yes, it's backyard wrestling, but like it's fully trained people making fun of backyard wrestling <laughs> and having fun while doing it. So I highly recommend. It is some of the funniest wrestling-related content I've ever seen, um, and that's not just because I'm in it. <laughs> And um, yeah, and just like go to if you're a wrestling fan, go to your local shows. It's the biggest thing I can say, like it really means a lot to your favorite wrestlers and your favorite shows if you just show up and like support the show because that's wrestling took a hit during the pandemic. So like all these people really need your support right now more than ever. Vanessa, yeah, any final words? Anything? Uh, I don't. I'm bummed. We have. Uh, Pem Valley on Saturday. Yeah. And so we won't be able to see you, but that's okay. She'll be there soon. Okay. You heard her. Soon. It'll be soon. I, 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 at least at least a few more months. Oh, yeah. No, no worries. That's that. Yeah, because my, my husband, we always like look for the 
the girls matches because we're eventually mm-hmm. gonna take our girls but they're still too little to stay up that late and uh i'm always pushing on aaron to announce the girl matches before so he's now starting to do that because i've harassed him enough yeah <laughs> good job well so yeah so then yeah that's what we ask so then my husband always asks if you're gonna be there because he likes watching Oh, thank you. You and we, the, yeah, we watched her. It was a cross body match, but we watched her uh, one of her matches on here. One Taco night. Fest. Yeah, Taco Fest. That's ah, what it was. That yeah. was a fun show. <laughs> uh, I don't think we have the VOD, but I think I was fairly impressed by your in ring performance. That was the first time I. So that would have yeah. been great to keep, too. My initial reaction. Mm-hmm. Um, Alexia, you've been a pleasure to have on. Um, you're welcome back anytime uh, when you get back in the ring. Uh, or or just plug anything. Um, come back. Hell, we can we can uh, talk about Wally if you want. Um, I mean, that sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we are a wrestling show. We hardly talk wrestling. So uh, you're welcome back anytime to put anything over. Uh, have yourself a wonderful night, and thanks for joining us. All right, you too. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Had a great time. Peace. Bye. Night. Night. Awesome. <laughs>